Uzbekistan'da sinsat sedi ve tse bu olay. Hem overall top kız, hem writing'den top kız ogen. I was actually quite disappointed with my writing score because I was expecting seven. How did you end up with nine in writing? Having enough time to edit your uh, work, very, very important. The biggest mistake would be to write more than you read. How they can find Ben Nine essays? How can they find authentic ones? It would certainly help with your writing and speaking skills because you are generating your own thoughts. My biggest dream for now is to become an IELTS examiner. Assalamu alaikum. Hormatli Edu Action Center YouTube kanalının kuzatuvçuları, Edu Podcast korsatuğumuzu kuzatuvçuları. Bugün sıla bilen yani bitti yeni sonumuzda koşup duruyanımızdan cüdeyem kursanımız. Her doyum gidek, cüdeyem bir acayip bugün hayatı, ondan taşıları, kariyerası tam olmalı, kızık bugün adamla teklif kılışı devam etmemiz. Bugün şuna adamla da yani bittesi. Uzbekistan'da e, ne dese bolade, sinsat sed ve dese bolade, IELTS alamade, uzumma İngiliz tıla alamade, cüdeyim ber e, etiyle, hatta ki IELTS instruktörler tamandan ham nereyal bob, yani e, ilaçsız bu gen de koringen narsana gen, yani IELTS'dan ham overall toks, ham writing'dan toks o gen, lazız atabayf mehmanımız, hoş geldiniz, assalamualaikum, yaşınsın. Ab, bugün kursatımızda ende kopçili oşap konu jobis çıkan konu, beşinci may konu imtihanız bu gelmesin jobis. Adam mesela çarşamba mı konu çıktı? Tak, çarşam, seşam mı konu? Seşam mı konu çıktı? Ha, iki gün neden ki in çıktı? Ende her bizim hadımlarımız ende oşu konu imtihanı, hemen kendinle katar, tavşır gelsiz, hiç kim tanıma gelen, burpayt kanalda ter kaldı, writing çok kız çıktı, kim akem bu da, hiç kim tanımıydı. O şeyin az başlangıç gibi az gene o iş hakkında et verseyiz, o zı lazizatı bayıftı kendi kim kayırdı oku gensiz, İngilizce'nin kaç oğun organç başlı gensiz, o zı yaşız ne içi de kayırdı, şu an size bir toluk malumat verip otuzsiz. Elbette, rahmet. Ben ismim Aziz Atabayev, yaşım 20 torda, yakında 25 toluk olamız. O zı faaliyetimde ne oyda başlı gemi? Hazırım Noel'de işliyorum. O şeyde toplup kette buyuyorum. O zaman aslında Noel'i. Noel'de demek ders veriyorum İngilizce'den IELTS instructor. Şimdi ma alt yıldan beri, alt yıldan az gine kopra ders verip geliyorum. Uh -huh. İngilizce'liği, sahasıgı, inde mamçe kopçiliğe plan kama geliyorum. Mamçe kop kop kişi hazır ge, neynerleyim, plan kama geliyorum bu sekere. İşleş. Hmm. Accidentally kep koyuyoruz da. Boştan boş İngilizce'nin ne mage organ geliyoruz. Toshto üniversitede bu talep oluyor. Hem okuyor mu zara okuyor mu? Halktan kopkit mi alıyor? Eğin asosiy delik motivation, antivatsa demek ortaolarım ne oluyor? Yanımda ortaolarım okuyor, İngilizcelerine iyi, bana muşla bilen var ya okuyor mu? Cüda katta padişah ki cüda katta antivatsa oluyor. Kaç an başlayan şunda İngilizce organ? Şunda 2015 yılında da şımsam, de çok konsepte bitirip liseyde başlayamaz. Oşa petle çok güzel okuyamaz, mayda çok güzel bugün. İ liseyde mecbur lise okuyamaz, yok ki kolej, yok ki lise talnas kiri bugün. Hazır ende on bir yıllık talim. Demeyim çok güzel şeylerden ki, çok güzel sınıftan ki, doğrusu liseyde başlayamaz. İ sırada tergelikte başlayamaz, prepte başlayamaz diye. Web siteler gibi varıp, dersler ne olup, dolaplam çoğlanıp, gramatiklerin organıp, başından başlayamaz. Ham ham gibi de. Atak uşa peyde uşa at that point school knowledge bugün buldu. Naka cihakta background bu mu ya? Demin ne var yine uzda okuyan siz İngilizce'nin? Ha. Kanal oku merkezde mi yolitse ne uzda tarlan yani siz ya mektap buzda mı? Yok oku merkezde gibi var yamız. Belseyiz asor ki taşıf. Uşa kışa uyam ne oluyor? Az önce vakt, taşkende ders verirken de, ki o ziyana ne oldu? O şekilde kolde, 
o'qib o'rganganmiz. O'zi ko'pchilik shu Navoiydan chiqqan mashhur hozir instruktor mana Jorabe Sanakolov, DRB Haytmurodov ko'pchiligi o'zi shu asrorakada o'qiganmiz deb aytishgandi. Shunaqa, shunaqa. Tushunarli, xo'p. IELTS ga unda qanaqa qilib kirib, xo'p, ingliz tilini ko'pchilik qana qatori o'rganganman deb aytdingiz. IELTS nimaga universitetga kirish uchun men uch topshirgan bo'lsangiz kerak, sizlar ham qachon topshirgansiz? Ya, ha, hozir shu bitta narsani o'tib ketaylik. Bugun ko'rsatuvimizda faqat o'zbek tilida emas, ingliz va rus tillarida ham qo'shish mumkin, sababi qulay bo'lish uchun, ya'ni mehmonlarimiz shu o'zidagi bor fikrlarini to'liq bildira olish uchun o'zbek, ingliz tili va rus tilini aralashtirishimiz mumkin bo'ladi. I hope they don't mind. They don't, they don't mind. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. So I'd probably switch at this point I would probably switch to English. Yeah. Because that's just feels more natural to me for some reason, yeah. Um by the way, now that we brought this up, I just want to slide in this topic of choosing what language to speak. And at this point it feels like uh English feels natural to me. Like and I would probably confidently say that my English is slightly better than my Russian which is my kind of like native language because I uh, studied um, at a Russian school yeah. yeah okay and way better than my Uzbek yeah exactly I'm, I'm guilty yeah. of that yeah <laughs> it's okay it's okay. yeah yeah so what was your question again yeah uh, why actually did you take IELTS why did so you need the IELTS? yes um, I mean when you study English or any language for, for that matter uh, you do end up desiring a certain proof or evidence of that skill or uh, language acquisition and that was IELTS for me and everybody again everybody took the the test and I didn't want to be an exception yeah I took the test in back in 2017 that was my first attempt okay uh, it was a paper based back then we didn't have CDI exactly yeah, yeah. so we had to I should say I, ha- I had to take the uh, paper based and I got seven. That was my f- first result. I did expect seven, although I I thought I could do better than that. Yeah, because a few of my friends got better results. Got, uh, one of them got 7.5 actually. Yeah, and back then I expected, I had big ambitions and I expected big results. So yeah, I worked hard to get to uh, that level at that time and uh, deservedly so, I guess. Yeah, what about your writing? What was your so, first writing? Yes, score? I guess um, my writing was uh, 6.5 at that time so Good. it was my first uh writing score yeah and which i guess could be still could be considered a decent score exactly because uh, at that time for the first time candidates like getting 5.5 or 6 is a very good score for the writing test at that time yeah, yeah. and well, the funny thing is the funny thing is i ac- i was actually quite disappointed with my writing score wow <laughs> yeah because i was expecting seven uh, for some reason i uh compared my samples at that time with some of the samples that actually got seven or 7.5 and i thought okay i did either the same level of made the same level of um essay or slightly worse so that could be seven potentially but i guess my main mistake sort of like uh, was my main weakness oh back then was task one so mm-hmm. i wasn't really familiar with uh task one rules i guess and I wasn't really confident, yeah. So I guess I don't have the breakdown uh, now because it was way too old, yeah. And uh, so I, I mean, I might n- never know, but I guess the problem was task one, yeah, back then. Yeah, actually, uh, we have noticed after this bro- bro- breakdown uh, service has been launched, uh, we noticed that most of the candidates, even IELTS instructors, have a problem with their task ones. So, uh, you started your journey, IELTS journey, with 6.5 in writing, and how did you end up with 9 in writing, which is really incredible. Yeah, I guess so. It took me, how many years is that? Seven years? Yeah, yes. seven years apart. So, um... I should probably note that I've never been, uh, I've never had a writing background. So like I've never been an, I've never worked as an editor. I didn't have any writing skills. And like, I guess I've never been inclined towards writing Mm -hmm. or writing skills per se. Uh, But I just uh, loved the way IELTS and IELTS questions and IELTS as as a whole uh, functioned and and it, I just uh, loved what everything that uh, had to do with with the IELTS. So I loved the exam. Okay. I I fell in love with the exam sort of like and started uh, going deeper and deeper into this field. But 
even then I didn't really like teaching. Uh, by the way, I did start my teaching career back in 2017, right after, right after I took the test. Mm. A funny story here. Um, so when I took the test, it was October 29th, 28th, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. And uh, we had to wait like 14 or 13, 13 days, 13 days yeah. until for paper-based. Yeah, yeah, for paper-based, 13 days. I think it still is, yeah. Yeah. And 13 days, and in between, in that period, during that period, I started thinking, okay, what do I do now? Like, I've got plenty of time, or plenty of free time, and I had to occupy my mind with something, with something meaningful. And I started teaching just to get some pocket, just to make some pocket money. I mean, I was 18. So I just turned 18 at that time. And um, I've never worked a day, a single day uh, in my life prior to that. And I started teaching at a language center. It was a small language center. And I started teaching right after I took the test, but before I got the results. Wow. Yeah. Um, so you were quite sure with your score, right? Like, yeah. In fact, in fact, uh, when they asked me about my background, I said that I don't have the experience, but I've got the skills. And as, as a proof of my skills, I, I told them that I got seven. Hmm. Even if I didn't know what my score would be. Wow. Like before the results came out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah. So you were confident with your performance on that. Yeah, day. I guess yeah. so. All right. And I saw your posts and I saw your previous results before this yeah. overall and writing nine. In your the last attempt before nine, uh, you scored eight in writing. Yes. And could you tell us the difference between eight and nine? What is the difference between two scores? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. Yeah. So I remember the exam that I took right before my nine. So it was about two or three weeks apart. It was April, early April, like 11th, I guess. And um, I got more or less like relatively easy questions. I, at least I would consider them uh, as easy ones. But uh, those, the difference between those questions and the one where I got nine was that um, I didn't actually prepare or I wasn't familiar with that question. So to put it shortly, the difference between those two exams was that for my nine, I got familiar question. I got a familiar question. Mm. I got the question and a topic that I actually prepared for. Mm-hmm. In fact, I did prepare for that question with my offline students okay. about three days before that because it was the question that uh, students got on, the candidates got on paper-based exam. Mm-hmm. I think it was April 27. Uh, Dierbeck uh, posted on his channel, he always does that, yeah. uh, exam talk yeah. where he posted task one, task, task two questions. Yeah, question topics. And I saw the, the question that uh, student, the candidates got um, on that day. And it was, it said something along the lines of, should the CEOs and bi- business uh, presidents or company uh, presidents get higher salaries than other ordinary workers? And is it fair or not? Like, do you yeah. agree or not? Yeah. Yeah. So it was agree, disagree. Yes, so. it was. Uh, agree, what about disagree, the task one? For task one, I got uh, I got a table. Uh-huh. It was a comp- um, no, it was a trend graph. It was a trend table. Uh, it was about the number of marriages in Australia mm. between a certain period. Yeah. They compared religious marriages and civil marriages, and they also uh, did compare the average age for grooms and brides. Yeah, you, you're saying that uh, you got the familiar topic. Yes, but. Even if you got the familiar topic, do you think it's still possible to write a sample for like to uh, Ben Nine? How how how it's possible? Because I've heard from a lot of IELTS instructors and teachers that even if you have like plenty of time, even if you are writing an essay at at home, it's still quite impossible to write an essay for well, a, I guess we for, for a Ben possible. 9. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like w- yeah. W- what's the difference? You, you think only the topic, you're, you're saying that topic was easy. In which criteria you are putting uh, these topics okay, to say it's question. easy? Yeah. I, so I uh, no, it's not only about topic familiarity. No, it's not, but it was a huge advantage. 
So I should note that. It was a huge advantage for me in my case. But of course, I, uh, I don't think, I don't attribute my success to only that. Yeah. And by easy, I mean for task one, if you, if you see the numbers and the figures that are quite obvious in terms of how you should organize, how you should develop uh, them into paragraphs, how, sh uh, what comparisons you're supposed to make and that sort of things. That's what I call easy. Yeah. Because you kind of know what to do. And in, for task two, I guess the, the easiness would be, uh, would have a lot to do with, um, the details the examiners put into the topic or put into the question. And by that, I mean, the more details you have, the more specific the question becomes. Mm. So that means you you are, the more you, likely you are to go off topic. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, here, which criteria? We know that like for each task, uh, there are four criteria, like task yeah. response, CC, grammar, and which of these four criteria uh, is the most important one? to score higher? Well, I guess they're all equally important, but if we're talking about the easiest and the hardest ones... But we, we hear from a lot of candidates that we should use a high-level vocabulary so that yeah. it will be a good meaning with a good grammar structure and uh, for lexical resource. I think when it comes to lexical resource... Uh, well, then, in that case, let me just uh, provide some um, insight into, for, into all band descriptors. So for task response, I think that was that's the hardest part, the, the, the hardest cr uh, criterion, as far as I can tell. Why? Uh, well, because oftentimes the candidates tend to either uh, misinterpret the question or uh, don't plan their essays properly and end up going off topic. Is it for task one or task two or both for both tasks? I guess for both. Yeah, that would, yeah, that would be applicable for both tasks. Yeah. So in in in, in the case of task response, I would strongly recommend planning. It's like planning is a must. I personally spend about five, sometimes maybe seven. If the question is slightly tricky, uh, I might spend like seven minutes on planning. Mm -hmm. So I just think about I just brainstorm ideas so what am I gonna say to this what, be, what would be my argument to this and what would be my counter argument to that and that sort of thing and for higher bands like if you're stuck at eight uh -huh. so the difference that would mm, what se what would set you apart from the band nine and band eight uh, would be uh, providing critical thinking, showing critical thinking. Uh -huh. And by critical thinking, I mean you should definitely uh, explore all possible or at least uh, many possible uh, scenarios and and and uh, viewpoints. Okay. In my case, in my question, uh, so I did explore both sides, even I if I didn't have to. So it wasn't a discuss both views question. It was an agree or disagree. And uh, But I still did uh, mention the the opposite viewpoint. So you both agreed and disagreed. I didn't. Agree, uh, I didn't disagree with that. I just mentioned. Oh, it's so just yeah. So I just said. I, I literally said some may. Well, my, wh while some may claim that this and this this may not work, but then I refuted with a counter argument. It was a very strong counter argument, and yeah, that was a very uh, effective thing to do. Yeah. Mm. I think that's what set me apart from Ben 8. Mm, yeah. Okay, let's try to help our uh, candidates to uh, achieve a good score with the yeah. writing by counting the steps. You said that uh, first, candidates should plan before they write. What's the sec second step? What's the next step? Do they, do, should they start with task one or task two? Uh, I how, always, how, yeah. yeah. How much time should they spend for each task? Can you please tell us more details? All right, so yeah, I always start with task two because it's more important. I mean, it's more valuable in terms of the scores. And even if I run out of time and uh, end up making a mess, I would choose to make a mess in task one than task two. 
Uh, so I guess that makes a lot of sense. So I always start with task two. I finish it. I normally finish it somewhere between 35, 40 minutes. So in my last attempt, on my last attempt, like I, I finished it in, I guess, 35 minutes. Yeah, around that time. Mm. And I finished my task one in 15 minutes. So I had about 10 minutes left for editing and proofreading. Okay. And which is, by the way, which is a very important thing to consider. Uh, I mean, having enough time to edit your uh, work is very very important because even if you are a very high skill writer even if you uh, have a firm grasp of English you still you may still make certain inaccuracies yeah. that you may not that you may have missed uh, for some reason and it's always good to double check yeah all right all right so uh most important things planning and editing I like having enough time for editing at yeah, the end of the test absolutely the essential end. things yeah and what do you think what's the biggest mistakes of candidates while preparing for the IELTS writing uh, when it comes to preparation I guess the biggest mistake would be to write more than you read yeah that's my one of my favorite quotes that I have come up myself uh, come up with myself so I always advise my students and just uh to read more than they write because the candidates tend to overemphasize the importance of writing for writing while i strongly emphasize the value of reading for writing okay and let me explain let me make it clear uh, i set myself a rule that i read 10 times more than i write so that so the ratio is 1 to 10 like for example if i write one essay this week the next uh, thing I do is I read 10 samples or I analyze 10 samples. And only then I write the next one. So you mean reading samples, sample essays, not yeah. article or book? Well, I personally don't prefer reading articles or books. Uh, if someone is keen to read books, sp specific books like, I don't know, comics, well, I mean, uh, I wouldn't... Uh, say that would be a necessarily bad thing uh, it's, it's just what i like to do and that's what i did i mean it ielts is quite specific and standardized exam so you have to have a sp very specific preparation process so you can't just read anything and expect to be good at ielts you know yeah so is there a number of essays that is uh, must to be written by candidates before they prep or just or, oh yeah you've or, raised, or, or, or do you yeah. know like how many essays did you actually write okay you you've raised a very um controversial topic i guess and everybody just freaked out when i actually posted the number of essays that i've written well approximate number i don't have a um count of that but the approximate number of essays that i've written in my entire life not just like this year or this week, would be about 100, about 100, yeah. And that's wow. just task twos, yeah. What about, about reports, task ones? Even less, yeah. Like I've written probably around 70, maybe 80 max reports, like because I focus on task two m uh, more than I Okay, in your case, one, let's yeah. change the question. How many Ben 9 essays did you analyze? Well, in that case, that would be a 1,000. Yeah. Yeah. Probably more than, definitely more than a hundred. Yeah. So uh, if we look at my rule that I just mentioned, that would be one to ten, and that would be around a thousand. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about uh, more in details uh, about this an analyzing essays. Yeah. First question: How they can find Ben Nine essays? How can they find authentic ones, reliable ones? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, it's it's hard. It's hard nowadays to even nowadays we've got all the uh, re resources uh, available to us but there are also a lot of um, non-legit essays that uh, certain people uh, just write and think this is a band nine exactly. just because yes. they like it yeah yeah and they it may not be a band nine yeah definitely so in that case I would recommend reading uh, the essays that were written by former examiners like Pauline Col uh, Colin uh, who is an uh, IELTS expert, and I've I've read a lot of her essays. I've read a lot of uh, Simon's essays. IELTS Simon is quite popular, and and most importantly, 
Uh, and relatively recently, I started analyzing the essays that written by uh, none other than ChatGPT. Yeah, that's probably my biggest mentor. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, Ch I think ChatGPT helps a lot of people uh, yeah. for their IELTS prep. Yeah. Okay. And the second uh, process here, once they find the essays, what are the steps to analyze the essays? Should they just copy and paste but by writing or memorize it oh or no no how, that would how? Be a what, terrible what's approach. what's the correct <laughs> way yeah to okay. an analyze it do do do does anyone still do that i mean copying someone's essay there are just by hand uh that would be a terrible thing to do at least because i'm not about i'm not sure about the effectiveness of it but i'm definitely sure that it's going to be a, a mundane task to do and you would end up uh quitting it altogether so yeah uh, well, the first thing is don't do what's what's what n what may not be enjoyable to you. I mean, it might be it might sound cliche, but I mean, if you if you're doing something, if you're practicing something that is absolutely boring to you, uh, you will end up quitting it, a hundred percent. Yeah, you you may do it out of your some sort of like uh, motivation, burst of motivation, uh, just for one day or two days, but then you would still stop doing that. Uh, so what I would recommend is I always analyze essays by looking at them or reading them at least four times. Mm -hmm. And the, f the number four is important here. And by four, I'm referring to four uh, criteria in, in, in band descriptors, in official band okay. descriptors. I read the essay first purely out of task response perspective. And then the same thing with cohesion, coherence, coherence and cohesion, and etc. So each time you focus on different criteria. Yes, yes, on a separate criteria. And that helps a lot because you zoom in and you f em emphasize, you start noticing what's important only for that particular criterion. Yeah, but before analyzing, before reading the essays, w w will you like have a look at the band descriptors and have a look at the which is eight, which is band nine? I uh, not at this point because at this point I've nearly an, uh, memorized the whole band descriptor. Because because okay. by the way, this is also a very effective thing to do. Yeah. Uh, not many people, not many candidates do that. I think even uh, at higher levels. Uh, not many uh, candidates uh, seem to understand the differences between, like, say, eight and nine. And in my case, I've worked a lot with former examiners on different platforms. And I kind of, like, understand the way they think, the way they assess, and started copying their approach. Mm -hmm. And uh, throughout my career, I've analyzed my students' essays about probably like more than 500 essays and I've given feedback to a lot of students and I've kind of like trained myself to be an examiner yeah I might not be a legit examiner but I almost almost like become an examiner sort of like yeah, yeah almost yeah sure because and that took, helped yeah. a lot actually and I don't write that would be my biggest advice I don't write essays just for the sake of writing when i write essays i don't write just for the sake of writing like if i write particular if i choose to write particular sentence that would be purely because it would help in some way like for example if i'm going to put if i'm going to give an example of, of i don't know like why and explain why fast food is bad and start talking about calories and and and fats and sugar that would be only to improve my task response because I know it would help with my task response. Not because it's interesting or it's something that just came to my mind. A lot of candidates do what? They do, they start writing whatever comes to their mind. Mm. Okay, so let's talk about this. Oh, let, let me write this, let me say this, let me say that. Uh, and But I filter my thoughts quite carefully, quite, quite thoroughly and only choose the the ideas and the thoughts uh, and, and basically turn them into sentences, only those which are definitely going to help with my score. And at the same time, I'm quite 
conscious of band descriptors. I always think about band descriptors. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, according to the some of the breakdown reports, I mean, not students, but the instructors' reports, we can see that their weak points are task response in task one. So, what do you think? examiners will wait from candidates for a band nine all right so uh well i as i've guessed um that was my assumption that a lot of instructors who are at eight or eight point five even are still might be uh, might still be struggling with task achievement in task uh, one and that i think has a lot to do with uh your logical thinking Mm -hmm. uh, I would put it this way. So let me make it clear. In order to get a high score in for task achievement, you would have to understand certain subtleties and nuances in the task itself. Let's say the graph itself. Like for example, in my case, it was, as I said, uh, marriages in Australia. I started pointing out some of the details, intricate details from the table that as i think a lot of candidates would miss mm. i wrote three sentence overview okay because i do it uh i, I do it deliberately uh, a lot of candidates tend to write two sentences in their overviews mm. and, and that's a qu quite popular approach but i try to do do it three yeah i try to uh, write three sentences sometimes it might end up being four yeah uh, but because I think that almost always two or even one sentence overview would be uh, insufficient to get a high score for task achievement and yeah so noticing um, summing up uh, so noticing the details the intricate details that examiners might be expecting from you is something that would set you apart from lower bands. Okay. Uh, and here, f for both tasks, do you think the num? For example, it in the task it's written that write at least one hundred and fifty words or write at least one hundred uh, two hundred and fifty words. What do you think? Uh, is it really important in word counting if you write less than those numbers? Will will the score be decreased? Yes, it, your score will be decreased, will be reduced um, to a certain degree because it's the requirement of the task. If you look at the task achievement or task response, uh, they both work quite the same way when it comes to word count. So if you can't achieve the required word count, uh, the, the required number, your score will uh, be lowered but I don't think that it will be lowered too much mm -hmm. so for example if the candidate is already at 6 for task achievement or task response okay. writing let's say 235 words mm -hmm. wouldn't make a big difference because it's already 6 I mean, it's, n it's not that impressive already so but if you are going for after nine, yeah, that would be an absolute necessity. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. And what about the the maximum number of words? Is there a maximum number, or is there no, a limit? No, th there isn't. There is no ceiling for that. Yeah, I know some of the candidates write over five hundred. Uh, I personally have never written anything, not just on the exam, but in my own, like under home conditions, never written anything above four hundred. On my exams, I normally write somewhere around 300. And on my last exam, I wrote uh, exactly 329 words for task two and 212, I think, somewhere around that, uh, for task one, yeah. Yeah, okay, and in we talked about the task achievement of task one. For task two, what do you think is most more important, uh, like the structure of your essay or the ideas? Which one is more important, and which one do you think is uh, like? Well, well, obviously they are both important. I mean, the way you organize, I think uh, by structures we uh, tend to mean the way you organize the organization of your essay. Yeah, and uh, that would matter for cohe coherence and cohesion 
uh, criterion and when it comes to ideas like if your ideas ideas are irrelevant or not clear then uh, that would be uh, that would affect your sc- your task response score so they would be both quite important for a higher score after like getting a nine for writing do you think it's repeatable and oh that's an interesting question yeah uh i actually haven't thought about that yet uh not that you mention it i think it is it certainly is i I don't think it's one time thing exactly Uh, but i'm not sure if it's uh going to be repeated by me because i'm at I'm not planning to take that many exams in the nearest future. You think that like you need many attempts to repeat? Um, so the, I've actually the taken night. the IELTS exam eight times and I would probably need to put the word only eight times because as we can see today, a lot of uh, Niners or uh, a lot of uh, candidates uh, at, at higher levels, they tend to attempt as many uh, times as possible to get the best, to make the most out of the exam. Uh, But I've only taken it like eight times. So in my case, I think, uh, yes, um, answering your question, you would definitely need to have a little bit of luck. Yeah. A little bit of luck. Uh, As in my case, that would be, uh, the luck would be involved in topic familiarity yeah. mm. but in that case I would say some people can just make their own luck I mean by preparing wow. for as many essay questions as possible essay topics as possible you can make your own luck yeah okay if you happen to take the test again uh, what do you think how many attempts will you need to repeat your nine for writing I think that the would approximate number. yeah the approximate number would be somewhere around 10 yeah i think 10 is a good number yeah i would be realistic i'm a realistic person i'm not gonna say okay i'm gonna repeat it in three attempts uh but yeah that would probably take me around thank you for being honest like not like uh, okay and let's move on to other skills of the tests okay we know that your listening and reading scores are nine and let's talk a little bit more about these skills as well. Uh, how I, I really liked your approach of uh, analyzing essays uh, to get a higher score in writing. Is there some kind of unique structure of yours for listening and reading as well? Uh, so when it comes to listening and reading, I don't think my techniques or my teaching style is uh, unique in any way. So what I do is, uh, if we're not talking about the basics, like at higher bands, uh, I think it all boils down to concentration, mm-hmm. both for listening and reading. Like for example, if you're uh, if you're uh, mentally drained uh, because you're just I don't know tired because you wor- worked the whole week and now you at the end, by the end of the week. Like you normally take the CDI on Sunday. Mm-hmm. So if you are really, really tired, you're not going to perform as well as you possibly could. Mm. So that would be an important factor in my case and in, in, in the case of other Niners. Okay. Yeah, but at slightly lower levels, like 30 plus, um, well, I think it, again, boils down to vocabulary. I don't think there are any uh, magic techniques that you, you can use and get higher sc- score immediately. Uh, yeah, because understanding the rules of the game, which is, do you n- happen to know this word or not? Yeah. Yeah. Like, the whole idea behind listening would be, do you understand what they just said or not? And the whole idea behind reading would be, did you understand Did you understand what you just uh, read here in this sentence or not? Hmm. Because if you're not understanding, if you're not catching the idea, the the, the gist behind the sentence or the um, the speech of the of the speaker, nothing would help you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there are instructors, IELTS instructors, good ones. Some of them advise their students to listen. Uh, 
uh, podcasts or music or watching movies in English or uh, reading articles to improve their reading articles, books, or there are some uh, specific books to improve the reading. And do you have something similar, some some, some similar suggestions? Yeah, I'm pr- pretty sure that I mean, for uh, students, these, let's say. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that these recommendations would definitely uh, help to make a difference, at, uh, especially at lower levels like B1, B2. But again, I would strongly advise uh, all the students who are preparing for their IELTS exams to focus as much as they can on the IELTS itself. Hmm. Because once you are off the field, of this field, you're going to experience, you're going to witness a lot of the words and phrases, phrases that are not common in IELTS, in the IELTS uh, industry or IELTS field. When I was uh, personally preparing for the tests, uh, I mean, when I was actually learning English, I heard about one strategy uh, from one of the instructors, and I'll, I'll now tell you tell you this strategy, and you you tell me your opinion about this okay, strategy, sure. whether it works or not. So uh, you basically take the text uh, article, uh, any article. That is the uh, that's written in the topic that you like. For example, if I like uh, programming, that I will take the article about programming and read and analyze and keywords, and speak about uh, after reading that, analyzing a new vocabulary and uh, writing it down, and speak about that topic, and record my voice, or I'll speak it to my friend or my partner, and after that, I will write a quick overview of that text so uh, with this strategy the instructor told me that it helps for your listening and after that you listen to your uh, voice and analyze your mistakes in speaking or just get the feedback from your partner or friend how it's gonna help do you think it's it's uh, really I think it's effective it's it it could be effective for reading purposes so you would uh, improve your reading comprehension and you would uh, improve your vocabulary uh, bank uh, it would certainly help with your writing and speaking skills because you are generating your own thoughts. Okay. Even if it's based on certain other source of um, information, you're still generating it yourself. So you are practicing grammar, you're practicing vocabulary, active vocabulary, and so you're basically improving your speaking and writing as well. Uh, but in terms of listening, I don't think it's that effective for yeah. listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and for listening and reading, wh- what's what's the uh, most common problem between the students and what kind of advice do you give to those students who are struggling with listening and reading? Oh, I guess um, the wh- I guess the one of the most common problems with listening, besides I guess vocabulary, would be that they're not practicing the test in the right way. Uh This could be reflected in taking too many uh, mock tests. Yeah. That's one thing they uh, happen to do quite often. They just take the test, uh, check their scores, they get disappointed, and uh, they go do another one. Hmm. Uh, and that's uh, that's a wrong thing to do, of course. Uh, for one thing, it's bad because you're not analyzing your previous work because you are eager to to to cover up uh, your failure yeah. and just calm yourself down with slightly higher score. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you're not improving in any way. You're just it's just ego, like it's ego lifting in in terms in, in in gym terms. In this case, it would be uh, ego ego practicing. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's the same a, case with the reading, right? Same thing with reading. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And w- what do you suggest to those kind analyze, of students? Yeah, analyze your mistakes. I personally used to listen to the recordings while commuting to my uh, school or lyceum and back. I would have my headphones on and the journey would take me about 15 minutes and it was enough for one section three and section four. Mm. And I would listen to those because they were 
particularly hard for me, and I would listen to those recordings without questions, without the questions, without the uh, test paper. I would just listen to what they're talking about mm. and try to be engaged, try to be interested, generally interested what they're uh, in what they're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a really interesting approach. When you, I mean, when you don't have any question papers and anything, you're not you distracted. Would, yeah, yeah, you're not distracted. You concent, you fully concentrated on the audio. And yeah. the same thing with reading. Uh, just put your questions away for a few minutes, uh, for some time, and just read the text. A lot of the times, I'm pretty sure I can guarantee that a lot of the times when candidates finish their reading, if you ask them about the passage itself, they may not remember the passage well or at all. Yeah. And that's because they're too focused on the questions. Yeah. Finding an answer for those questions. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk a little bit more about ChatGPT as well, yeah. using ChatGPT correctly to improve candidates' writing. You know, specifically in Uzbekistan, uh, I'm not sure about other countries' statistics, but specific specifically for Uzbekistan, it was really low. I mean, the lowest section of the test, lowest skill for Uz- Uzbekistan uh, statistics. Uh, but in the last two years, it really increased from uh, around five to almost six, writing only writing section. And I think ChatGPT or AI tools are one of the reasons for this. And I've heard from a lot of instructors that uh, ChatGPT cannot assess candidates' uh, writing correctly. What do you think? Does it help to assess candidates' writing? And how students should use ChatGPT correctly to improve their writing? Okay, so um, it's a very good question. And uh, when it comes to statistics, yes, that's great news. Yeah, that's great news, uh, first of all. Uh, I didn't know about the writing section. Uh, I didn't know that it was so low. Uh, so when it comes to your question, I think, yes, I would f- firstly agree with the fact that uh, ChatGPT uh, no, as of today cannot assess uh, your uh, essays, at least IELTS essays properly, uh, not to mention task ones, um, simply because they're, they're not capable of noticing certain details that examiners are trained to. And for that reason, I would strongly recommend working with a teacher or former examiners, although the former would be easier than the latter one. So, I mean, the, finding a teacher would be a much easier, uh, a much easier task. Uh, when it comes to analyzing their essays, mm, I think, yeah, a teacher's, uh, teacher's feedback is a must because you may not understand your weaknesses and strengths, and you might be practicing the test in a completely different or just absolutely wrong way yeah and the teacher is supposed to show the path show the you guide you through this journey and give you feedback point your mistakes to improve help improve your skills don't you think chat gpt's feedback is better than teacher's feedback chat gpt's feedback is only better and is only superior in terms of uh, being more attentive and having more a bigger database. Yeah. That only boils down to that. But, but if a teacher or an IELTS instructor can and does understand the band descriptors well enough, they can train the chat GPT mm. uh, by, I think, making the right prompts into uh, so that the chat GPT can actually learn a little bit to uh, to assess your essays a little slightly cor- slightly better certainly yeah. better than uh it would otherwise but again uh at the end of the day i think as of today chat gpt can't replace the examiners they can I- replace teachers yes yeah i mean teaching english is a completely different thing yeah but when it comes to uh, analyzing and assessing your uh, essays, I think I'm, I, st- I would still root for examiners. Yeah. Or, really? Or still root for 
uh, human beings. Yeah. Okay, that that's interesting. And yeah, you mentioned that AI tools or ChatGPT, whatever, can replace teachers. Why do you think it cannot replace the examiners? Because Cambridge Assessment English, the biggest uh, company in the world, who is the professional in the English language assessment and uh, teaching sphere, already launched their AI exam, which is Lingua Skill. It is adaptable test for the listening and reading test. If you answer correctly for the uh, questions, it will start like uh, the level of questions will be more difficult. But if you answer incorrect, then the level will decrease. It's a multi-level test. Mm. And for writing and speaking, it's not fully assessed by AI. A uh, human is also involved. Uh, involved. But don't you think in the near future, uh, let's say exam processes will move to the AI? Yeah. Uh, so that's great news. Uh, no, I mean, like, wh- what do you think? Yeah, my opinion is that uh, I just think it's not possible for now. But in the nearest future, definitely. I can see where it's going. Uh, I can totally see the candidates taking speaking exams, their IELTS speaking exams with an AI. Yes. Not even a real human being examiner, but with an AI. Uh, And the same thing with writing, yeah. And I'm pretty sure that the exam will be fully optimized and and, and run by AI. But, Mm. But not like now yeah it would, it would year, definitely next it would, year yeah. it would definitely take some time sure yeah it's it's still in its infancy the ai is industry is still in its infancy i think we've got a lot coming up in the in the distant future but yeah uh to answer your question i would definitely think that i definitely think that the whole ielts assessment thing uh would be fully replaced and fully run uh, by ai yeah okay it's quite possible of course yeah you also mentioned that it can now chat GPT or whatever AI tool it can replace the teachers. Yeah. And you are a teacher, right? Yes. You are a teacher. And do you think you can be replaced by AI tool? It's a very tricky question, but uh, let me answer why it's not yet replacing. It's not doing what I just said. It can replace the teachers, modern teachers, in terms of a lot of uh, factors mm-hmm. like providing information, making it clear, uh, customizing information so you can choose how to deliver the information. For example, you can just ask the chat GPT to make it simpler, to use simpler terms, to explain it like I'm five, and it would make it much easier to understand. But when it comes to teaching, not just language, but anything for that matter, I think one of the primary aspects of of of of a t- or qualities of a teacher that the AI currently can't uh, achieve is the discipline. Yeah, mm. a mentor or a teacher is someone who can and should discipline their students, and that's only achieved. Uh, they can only be achieved uh, by uh, a real human being right now. And another thing that you cannot be replaced is. In Uzbekistan right now, only you have a Ben 9 in writing, so <laughs> <laughs> I think you shouldn't okay. worry about it. And yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm totally not worried <laughs> about that. Yeah, at least because uh, I don't see it happening in the nearest future. Yeah. Okay, uh, you got your Ben 9 for writing and overall for IELTS. How did your life change? change after oh, this uh, uh, did life, it actually yeah. change my life did change it actually it's, it's, it's changed quite uh significantly because at least because i haven't i hadn't been active on social media platforms before that up until that point and once you are once you've got some online presence uh your life changes completely and it's not necessarily about nine it's about being heard and being seen seen by um people yeah it's it's basically it boils down to fame and and recognition yeah which can be achieved without the band nine by the way yeah what about in your workplace and uh, 
in, uh, in, in your classroom yeah. students i think start. yeah well my students are ha definitely happy they they've been rooting for me of, of, uh, for the whole journey yeah they probably are so proud they're, of you, yeah. they're quite supportive uh and yeah i'm happy to have uh, such uh f supportive um, and thoughtful students that i have right now and uh, they they are eagerly waiting for the podcast to uh, be released to yeah. watch and to to to to feel the the, the pride yeah for their yeah. teacher yeah uh, but in terms of teaching offline offline teaching it didn't change much yeah i'm still doing what i'm what but i've been with doing more yeah. confidence right <laughs> not necessarily now i wouldn't say that it boosted my confidence like i still not boosted like you kind of made sure that you're teaching correct things to the students so you, you kind of prove it's, i it's guess a proof it did yourself. it didn't change much bec at least because i've always kind of been i've always been confident in what i teach and what i preach yeah like i genuinely believed in what i taught mm -hmm. and that's why i i don't think it changed much like it's not like oh now i've got now i've got nine and now what I taught was actually correct. No, not, it wasn't uh, like the evidence of, of, of, of me uh, doing the right thing mm. because I generally believed that I was doing the right thing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have only IELTS classes or general English as well? Yeah, I also teach general English. Yeah. General English. Okay. Which qualification do you have like did you graduate from lyceum uh, with the english language teaching yes uh, uh i i only have the qualifications in terms of teaching or english philology uh from lyceum only the the secondary uh education but when it comes to higher education i i am a college drop dropout actually i did uh quit college while i was a sophomore so that's the second year at university i finished my second year and then i decided to uh, pause i first paused it and i and then uh, and ended up just completely quitting uh, college altogether yeah were you studying there in english ph philology as well or no no i actually I've, i was majoring in finance yeah ah. because I've, I've always been a math guy yeah yeah i've always been a math guy ever since i started school uh, my first grade I've been quite um, keen on math and numbers, yeah. So I've always seen myself in finance industry and economics and banking, but never in teaching, yeah. If you are a math guy, you also solve the problem of getting a band nine in writing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good, yeah. And what are the plans for your future? Uh, are you gonna keep teaching or are you gonna change your career? Yeah, I am planning to teach at least because I enjoy what I do. Okay. Like, uh, at this point I really, uh, I genuinely enjoy teaching. I uh, I love what I do and I intend to keep doing this at least for the next five or 10 years, at least. Uh, but I have quite big ambitions and one of them is quite interesting i think one of them is quite interesting and i'm going to share it here and and i think i haven't shared before so my biggest plan or or dream for now is to become an ielts ex examiner interesting. i'm not sure if it's possible i haven't researched this uh question yet mm -hmm. uh but i'm pretty sure that you don't have to be a native speaker you don't yes, have to yes. be born in an english speaking country exactly so i guess um one of the one of the requirements would be getting a 9 which which i did i guess and the funny th the the funny thing is that i wanted to become an ielts speaking examiner not the writing examiner because i i hadn't imagined myself getting a 9 yeah i thought i would <laughs> i would first achieve a band nine in speaking that would be much easier task to do <laughs> than the writing one but yeah things have changed uh, completely and now i'm really cons i'm seriously considering becoming an ielts examiner for writing or speaking for writing yeah i don't think i can become an ielts speaking examiner yeah, without a nine yeah yes for writing yeah you you you, you were right your nationality doesn't matter like you, you don't need to be an in english or like russian 
anyone can be an IELTS examiner, but there are Scary. requirements. Yeah, of course. But unfortunately, it is not possible to be an IELTS writing examiner in Uzbekistan or in any other countries because, really? the, like, yeah, yeah, we don't have like uh, our writing examiners at our center, only speaking examiners. All the writings, all the listening, reading, and write, all the papers are checked in the regional office. Uh, mm. So you might, you might have to move, move have to move to another country and oh. <laughs> start being an IELTS examiner. And also, also there are uh, one of the requirements is to have a qualification, teaching qualification, yeah. uh, which is observed by a tutors. Uh, let's say CELTA or TESOL uh, from T TESOL from the reliable organization also teaching experience definitely not only nine but if you want to be a speaking examiner you definitely have to have nine for your speaking and no no less than uh, eight for writing so you already have nine for that but in one certificate by the way once uh, now that you mentioned celta i am actually planning to uh get get get my uh celta um uh, qualification i'm planning to uh, try my best in Celta and Delta after that. I think we pretty much covered a lot of topics. I think uh, it was quite uh, beneficial for the students, candidates who I are preparing so, yeah. for the IELTS exam. And always we tell our uh, guests in our podcast, like from the very beginning, this is our first podcast with you, but not the last one. So I hope we, so, yeah. yeah, we might invite you to talk about other topics, maybe after you get straight nines uh, for, maybe, for maybe skills. We'll see, yeah, yeah, by the yeah, we'll actually audience all the candidates who have heard about your achievements are waiting for an OSR one skill retake for your speaking <laughs> tests. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what's gonna happen. Yeah, I'll see. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for and having me. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. It was really nice to have a conversation with you, and I also got a lot of insights for the writing section. And maybe I'll also take the test in the future. Okay. <laughs> I'm happy Thank to you very that. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.